Hello, welcome to the Gym RPG Show. So the 3060 Ti came out last week, and not surprisingly, there was some information about the Navi 22 cards as well. And uh, those cards are also known as the RX 6700 XT, and also there's going to be a non-XT version. So we're going to look at the specs and performance of those cards. We're going to compare that to the 3060 Ti, which is already out. And we're also going to look at the uh, NVIDIA's response to those cards, which is going to be the RTX 3060. 60 and also the RTX 3050 Ti and as you can see this is what I'm going to be calling the mid-range battleground for GPUs because there's a lot of cards there and uh, there's going to be a lot of choice available so we're going to look at the performance we're going to look at some prices uh, speculated of course and we're also going to talk about availability okay so if you like this video make sure to click the like button and also to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this <laughs> Let's take a look at this table from Video Cars, and this table came out on November the 21st, but I don't think any of the information has changed, so I think it's still fine to use this table. And it's got the RX 6700 XT, has 40 compute units, which is half of the 6900 XT. And I think that should make the performance calculations pretty easy to do. Let's go to the RX 6700. Now it doesn't say how many compute units it has, on here and I did a bit of a search around but doesn't seem like anybody really knows exactly how many compute units or whether it has been confirmed or not but it's looking like that this will probably have 36 compute units from my speculation anyway based on the fact that a lot of people seem to think the Navi 23 has 32 compute units and of course that could very well change but um, for this video we're going to go with 36 compute units so here are the specs for the 3060 and the 3050 series cards and as you can see here uh, the 3060 Ti is already out and uh, there's also information for the 3060 and the 3050 Ti and also there's a 3050 as well although that's a separate uh, class of card I would say it's on the GA107 GPU whereas the 3060 and the 3050 Ti are on the GA106 GPU and what that really means is that um, the 3050 is really far back and you know my initial calc says that that's going to be more like a gtx 1070 or a gtx uh, 1660 super type of card so uh, we'll probably leave that for another video and we'll focus on the 3060 and the 3050 ti today so the key information i want to take out of this table are the cuda core counts for each card because usually the cuda cores multiplied by the clock speeds of the card usually gives you the performance of the card. And we know that with the Ampere cards, uh, most of the clock speeds have been pretty much the same for the cards that have been released so far, about 1700 megahertz for the game clock, and then about a 2000 to boost. Let's take that compute unit and CUDA core information and work out a relative performance for each graphics card. And to do that, we're gonna take this chart from the RX 6900 XT review from Tech Power Up. And this is the 4K relative performance. And we'll also look at the 1440p and the 1080p as well. But um, for 4K, that should constrain the GPU the most. And so you'll see the widest margin of performance here. So I've gone ahead and put these uh, GPUs into the charts. And I don't want you to look too hard at the uh, percentage numbers because they all refer back to the RX 6900 XT but I want you to look at I guess the placement of each card uh, in relative to the other cards around it so the RX 6700 XT is going to be very similar to the RX 2080 Super and it's going to be a little bit back from the RTX 3060 Ti the 6700 will be behind the 6600 XT of course and technically it should be about 10% back now the 3060 itself, that's going to be more like a 2070 Super. And if you're going to get the RTX 3050 Ti, well, that's going to be very close to that RX 5700 XT or the GTX 1080 Ti. Of course, you can't get that 1080 Ti anymore, but uh, that's going to be where it's going to be in terms of rasterization performance. Now, in terms of methodology about how I got these performance numbers, well, the AMD one was, were pretty easy because... Um, the RX 6900 XT has 80 compute units, the RX 6800 has 60 compute units, and there's a 19% difference. And there's also a 20 compute unit difference to the 6700 XT, which puts that performance back at around 62%. 
And similarly with the 6700, well, that's a four compute unit difference. So uh, that's going to be 10% back from the 6700 XT. Now for the NVIDIA cards, I got a little bit lazy. I didn't do the calculations. All I did was I took the relative performance of the 3090, 80, 70, and 60 Ti, and then I just plotted that against their CUDA core counts. And that gave me an equation, which then I went to use on the 3060 and the 3050 Ti to work out what their relative performance is going to be. So for the 1440p and 1080p results, I'll leave that for you to check out for yourself. You can just pause the video and check out the detail for yourself. But all I really want to say is that for the lower resolutions, such as 1440p and 1080p, uh, they're mostly going to be CPU constrained. Um, so I think the way Tech Power Up does these relative performance charts is they just take a whole bunch of games and then assign a performance level to uh, these cards. Uh, it's going to take the CPU into account and that's why you see the lower end cards uh, making up that performance gap to the higher end cards. So I think it makes sense to compare these GPUs to the 3060 Ti because that's more in their relative performance level. And I think if you do that, then you're going to see the performance difference between these cards a little bit better. And in this section, we're also going to talk about the price as well. Now, with the 6700 XT, that's very close to the 3060 Ti. And I think uh, when it's that close, uh, when it's like about 5% difference, then uh, they're trying to make you choose between other things other than the speed. So the 6700 XT will have more VRAM, but if you want ray tracing and DLSS, then maybe you want to go with the 3060 Ti. And I think they're both going to be about the same price at 399 MSRP to begin with. Now with the 6700, that's going to be technically 10% less speed than the 6700 XT. But as you can see that at 1080p, it uh, closes the gap a lot more because, well, it's going to be CPU constrained at those higher frame rates. So I think that's why um, the gap has reduced by so much. But I think realistically, it could be about like, you know, four or five percent difference at 1080p. So if you were to game at 1080p, the 6700 wouldn't be a bad choice, especially if uh, there is a price gap difference between the 6700 XT and the 6700. Now for the 3060, I think they're going to try and make you choose between the speed of the 6700 versus the features um, and the VRAM that you get on that 3060. So Again, it's going to be a tough choice for consumers. Do you want to go with a little bit less speed, but you get some features in return, or do you want um, more speed on that 6700? And I think NVIDIA is probably going to price these around the same level. Now for the 3050 Ti, because this card has six gigabytes of VRAM less than the 3060, I suspect that they're going to start this at around $299 or you know $50 less than the 3060 and I think they're going to make you choose between whether you want a little bit less speed and a lot less VRAM but um, it's going to cost a lot less. Okay let's talk about the availability of these cards and we'll start with the AMD cards first and I think you can see some hints from the 6800 and 6900 launch of what the 6700 launch might be because they didn't allocate a whole lot of wafers to these 6800 cards because they gave a lot of wafers to the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. And I think a similar situation could happen here because I don't think the demand for the PS5 and Xbox Series X is going to slow down in quarter one. So you could see a very similar situation for the 6700 series. So if uh, they announced the 6700 at CES in January, it could be February, March before we see uh, better volumes or uh, better stock of the 6700. So I guess for consumers out there trying to pick between the 6700 and the 3060 Ti, well, um, do you really want to wait three or four months? The 3060 Ti is out already. It's still hard to get, but you can, uh, if you look hard enough, then you might be able to get one. So let's talk about the NVIDIA cards and uh, the 3060 and the 3050 Ti. Well, I think um, NVIDIA have their own stock issues as well. So there's been an article in DigiTimes and they've said that uh, NVIDIA is having manufacturing problems. So I think they're still gonna have issues with the 3060 and 3050 Ti. 
And if they announce the um, 3060 and 3050 Ti in January, then we're looking at another situation where we're not going to get any of these cards till say February or March. Okay, so that about does it for this video. Make sure to click the like button and also to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this and I'll see you in the next one.